Well, howdy, everybody. Welcome to another edition of That's Railroad. <laughs> Where we bring the railroad to you. And we do love doing it. And uh, well, I'm going to share something with you. Uh, first off, we're really glad to have you with us. But I'm going to share something with you today that no one here knows except for me. How about that? I love railroad history, and I love the history of this railroad. I started uh, here at uh, the mine August 1st of 1977. In October of 1977, we got our first train load of mine, of uh, coal, down to the harbor, and I was here. I was down in the barges. I saw the train come in. That was pretty cool, and I'll never forget that. So uh, there's very, there's almost nobody left around here anymore that, uh, well, there's nobody <laughs> from back to, except for me. I'm the only one. So uh, I know a lot about the history of this railroad and, uh, and this whole operation. And I uh, hate to see that get lost. So I know in, in videos in the past, I've shared some of the history and I'll share some more in the future with you, kind of keep the history of this place alive or recorded. And uh, so anyway, yeah, today you're gonna find out something that nobody else here knows, except for me. How about that? All right, hope you enjoyed the show. Here on Bridge 11 again. Uh, a little rainy day. We've got a little bit of rain. It's been really dry here and we have needed to rain. A uh, couple things I want to talk about, uh, share with you. Let me, uh, I uh, got a, I got them heading back into the harbor here at the end of my shift. Uh, the train just, I'm um, following the train in. The train's just pulling into harbor, so I got to wait wait for him to dump off about 10 cars before I can get back into my barn so I got time to mess around here uh, either I sit here and wait or I get down there and sit and wait but anyway a uh, couple things you notice I made a video probably uh, three years ago about bridge guard rails those are the rails in the center of the bridges all of our bridges here had them when they track was built track was built uh, in 1975 76 and uh, actually I know a couple of the guys that, that worked on this original construction when they played the track uh, Atlas Railroad uh, laid the track all right uh, the, all the dirt work the excavation work was done before that uh, by a company called Langenfelder. They were out of Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, I knew quite a few guys that worked on that job. Uh, quite a few of those guys actually uh, hired on here. The first four uh, trackmen that U.S. Steel had when they opened this up were from Langenfelder. Uh, Terry, Fred, Jerry Coyce, they were all three brothers, and another gentleman by the name of Oscar Barney Castle. That was the original track crew. Uh, anyway, they're all deceased. Every, all those guys I knew, uh, Dick Lapping, Charlie Brown, uh, and uh, there's a bunch more that they're all they're all deceased now. Anyway, uh, when the original track was laid, all our bridges had the guardrails in the center. Over the years, those guardrails have been not always put back when they replaced the deck. I said a video three years ago explained all that why. Uh, now uh, they're not putting any of the guardrails back on any of the new bridges. The thinking now is that these bridge guard timbers on the outside uh, are sufficient for the slow speed track that we have to keep a car on the bridge if one comes off. 
that's the thinking. I'm not going to discuss that any further, but that's why there's no guardrails in the center now. Okay, <laughs> and uh, this is a 10 degree curve. Okay, I'll talk to you a little bit more about uh, super elevation. This is not a complete video on super elevation. Uh, just a little bit I'm going to show you here later on in the video. Um, so, uh, very this is interesting. I want you to look at the spacing over here. Uh, I'm sorry, that's my fault. Between the rail and the bridge guard rail, guard timbers. Between the rail and the bridge guard timbers. And look at the spacing over here on that side. Okay, a uh, good friend of mine, he goes by the username of Sparky, wrote in, he says, why aren't your rails centered on the bridge? How about that? Pretty cool, huh? They're very observant. They're shoved out. Down there in the tunnel, the same deal. There's a lot more area on this side than there is on this side. It's shoved up, the rail shoved up high closer to that edge of the the right edge of the tunnel just like here now why is that well this is what nobody knows and you're going to find out when they built the bridge and when they built the tunnel it didn't line up they either put the bridge in the wrong spot or they put the tunnel in the wrong spot and i don't know which one is wrong in relation to the other one of where it should be but in order to, when they laid the track <laughs> it just didn't work out right uh, so they shoved the rail over in both in order to make that the uh, 10 degree curve that the original engineers had designed this to be so that's why this track is shoved over this this way on the bridge and on the other bridge was a mistake Langenfelder made. Again, I don't know. I, I, I honestly, it's just my guess. It's just my guess, but this bridge is wrong. The bridge should have been this way more than it was. That's my guess. But anyway. All right. So now you find out something nobody else knows and all you guys know it. How about that? We'll be back with more. So don't you go anywhere. And I did want to tell you, I have a second channel, if you guys didn't already know. It's called That's Dave's Other Doings. Uh, i got some really cool stuff uh, me and the family get into. Put some railroad stuff on there from time to time. Um, Corey and Freddie are the stars of that channel. There's a link in this video's description to go check that out. Okay. And, uh... Corey's my daughter, and Freddie's my kitty cat, my little buddy. All right, if you don't already know. Well, a little bit more. This is the center guard rails. Uh, they're also called check rails or uh, Jordan rails. Some people call them Jordan rails. But anyway, uh, this goes over top of Route 88, a major, major highway. Uh, it's the second busiest road in our county. And uh, I personally think that guardrails over top of a bridge with this much traffic on it is a very good idea. Uh, I will tell you that these are all joints on here. And if you see, when you've got to uh, take the bolts off of a joint where the nuts are on the inside, or tighten them up, tighten the nuts up, it's a real, you gotta use a hand wrench. You can't use an impact, you just can't, there's no room. And I've tried those swivel things, and they just don't work very good at all. Uh, it, that's, that's the thing I don't like about the uh, guardrails from my standpoint of view. But other than that, whether they're left on the bridges or they're not left on the bridges, 
that's not my decision. So um, uh, I don't want to get involved in a discussion about that. All right. Well, all right. Here's the uh, question of the day. Uh, how do we get super elevation in a bridge? Now out here, well, let me start, let me uh, start that over. The uh, inside rail in a curve is always called the grade rail. The outside rail or the super elevated rail is always called the line rail. Sometimes we call it the low rail and the high rail because this is high, higher than the, this is your grade grade of your track and then we super elevate the high rail um, we call it super elevation there's a deer cross there how about that see it little one he must have gone down and got a drink anyway we call it in super elevation here in North America uh, most other countries, uh, you know, United Kingdom, Australia, call it can't. Okay? Same thing, just a different term. Let's understand something about bridges uh, before we get into how we super elevate this. Um, the bridge girder. All right? Right down there is the bridge girder. It's a great big I-beam. And uh, you have two of them. One underneath here and one underneath there. Those bridge girders, the tops of those bridge girders set level with each other. The bridge girders are not like this. Okay, so you understand that. Hold on. All right, there's, uh, there's the bridge girder. And uh, this particular bridge has what's two spans. So we have the abutment here that the bridge girders sit on down there on the concrete. Then we have the center abutment. So we got a span here and a span on the other end. This is kind of a short bridge. All right. So how we get that high rail or the line rail to be higher than the lower rail. Okay, let's go take a look and we'll be right back. Yeah, when we, uh, as you can imagine, when the train's coming down here, it's wanting to push out. The whole way through that, it's wanting to push out. But a lot of forces on that train. So you gotta understand that part also understand the next part all right this is a bridge timber that they didn't use for some reason I don't know why but you see this notch cut in there right there that's called a dap okay so that dap is what sits down on top of the bridge girder and the reason it's notched let's say well, let's talk right now. If we have a tangent bridge, so there's no super elevation in it, uh, both ends are notched the same. That and that would be the same. I sit down over the bridge girder, and that helps to keep that bridge timber from wanting to slide off when the train's going through there. All right, keeps the bridge timbers from moving back and forth. Okay, that's one reason on the dap. On a bridge that has a curve where we have super elevated rail. We have a dap on one side. This would be on the high side of the rail of the bridge. This side over here. That's where that small dap would be. Like that. Setting on that bridge girder. And then on the inside, you have a much greater dap cut. See that much greater so this is on the this dap here is on that side 
so this is your grade and that causes the bridge timber to set on a bubble like that. So all the daps on a super elevated curve have to be correct in order to get the right super elevation the whole way through that curve. But that is how uh, curves are super elevated on bridges. How about that? I have no idea why they didn't use this one, uh, but but you get a. But now you understand why and how that rail gets super elevated on a bridge. All right, I gotta get up track. Hope you have enjoyed today's show. And uh, have a really good day. We do appreciate you guys.